Hi guys, today I'm talking about another Chinese banger of a gaming mouse, the VGN Dragonfly F1 Pro Max and the 4K polling capabilities of it with the additional dongle. Let's crunch some basic specs first. The mouse is rocking the Pixar 3395 sensor together with the Nordic MCU. The weight is only 56 grams on my scale and the weight balancing feels perfect. The battery life on the mouse is very good and the 500mAh battery lasts for a long time even with the 4K polling rate. There are multiple models made of this mouse from cheapest to more expensive which are the F1 which uses a different MCU and is not capable of the 4K polling and weights 49 grams. The price is 50 euros or 39.99 dollars depending where you buy it. Then the F1 Pro with the Nordic 52833 MCU and a slightly smaller battery and the weight at 49 grams. The price is 60 euros or 49.99 dollars. And then the F1 Pro Max which I have here which has the Nordic 52840 MCU which also Razer uses and a larger battery. The price is 69.99 euros or 56.99 dollars depending where you buy it and lastly the F1 MOBA which is basically the F1 Pro Max but with the different logo and Huana switches on the main buttons. The price is the same as on the F1 Pro Max so 56.99 or 69.99 euros. The MCU differences between the F1 Pro and the Pro Max are probably something that don't matter at all but from the spec sheet of the MCUs the chip in the Pro Max and the MOBA version has a larger RAM. Every model other than the F1 is capable of the 4k polling rate with the additional dongle that you can purchase for around 13 dollars from mac keys or 22 euros from max gaming with the mouse you get the usb cable and the standard dongle some grips and a pair of smaller ptfe feet the build quality of this mouse is exceptional there is no creaking or flexing and the mouse feels just rock solid the sideways wobble is also minimal on the main buttons it could be less but it's not something i notice in use the coating is surprisingly good on this mouse and it has a nice soft matte finish to it and the grips are not needed to grip it firmly during these sweatiest weeks in finland i have put some pulsar super grips to it to absorb my sweat but in normal conditions they are not needed in my opinion the larger stock skates on it are shaped nicely and the edges were nicely rounded but the speed was somewhat mediocre on them. I've swapped uh, smaller feet included in the package and they seem to perform better for some reason. There are also third party skates available for this mouse for example from Tiger Eyes, BTL and X-Ray Pad feet so getting better ones should not be an issue in the future. The main clicks are using the KLGM 8.0 switches and the implementation feels really nice. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of the kills because the double clicking issues they can develop with time but we'll see how much of a problem it is with this mouse the click is kind of heavy so if that is something that worries you you should maybe look at the mobile version with the huanos the pre-travel is also minimal and the post travel is very springy so spam clicking feels really nice on it the scroll wheel is using either the klg a2 or a ttc silver encoder which both have been mentioned in a spec sheet i believe it is the kl1 because it doesn't feel or sound like any of the TTC encoders I have used. It works very well and I haven't had any accidental jumping happening with it so it is a nice balance with smoothness and tactility. Scroll wheel click is also nicely balanced so I have not had any accidental pings with it. The scroll wheel is centered on my unit but the small plastic part in front is tiny bit crooked. The side buttons are a bit mushy but they protrude so they don't get stuck inside the shell or anything like that and they are positioned quite nicely to be used quickly but are not in the way of my thumb while gripping the mouse. The shape of the mouse is very interesting. It combines features from many mice but it's not a direct clone of anything. It has a fairly low profile with the hump that is more on the middle. The curvature of this mouse is something I truly enjoy and it flares out slightly slightly in the front but then curves back in at the front corner. It feels really comfortable for my ring finger to sit. The main buttons have a really aggressive comfort grooves which lock my fingers in place really well 
and overall the finger position is quite low on the front. Not as low on the HDX for example, but on the lower side nevertheless. The overall length of the mouse is I'd say a medium minus, just a couple millimeters longer than the Viper Mini and the HDX, so it should suit a variety of hand sizes very well. With my hand size I can get a really natural relaxed claw grip with it and I've also found my hand to adjust a knuckle claw grip on it at some instances. Because of the low profiling I have a great inner hand maneuverability with it and the shape probably works very well with fingertip grip as well. All in all it is a shape that I can get a really natural consistent grip with. Size wise the M800 from Deluxe is probably the closest in terms of length and width but the in-hand feeling is very different because of the curvature in the front and I mean everywhere. This feels just a shrink down Viper V2, but this feels totally different. Next, let's talk about the wireless performance. Can the 4K Polyrate be good on a mouse this cheap? Well, the basic mouse driver with the 1000Hz has two modes for the sensor, a low power mode and a high power mode. With the low power mode and the motion sync enabled, the motion delay was around 1.2 milliseconds more than the control unit, which is already pretty good. The high power mode seems to improve the latency a little bit and with it the motion delay is around 1 milliseconds. With the 4K polling, the motion delay is seriously impressive. I can get basically the same motion delay than on Razer 4K which is around minus 0.5 milliseconds from the control unit and motion sync doesn't seem to increase it at all. And also the polling rate is very stable. This was kind of surprising for me since it seems that the mouse is still using ComPX firmware even even though it has a Nordic MCU. This is a similar situation than on the Lamzu mouse. I'm eager to see what kind of results Tech Power Up and House Gaming has with this mouse if they decide to test the motion delay of it. The dongle pairing can be a bit tedious process because the program used to do that, the VGN Hub, is in Chinese. But luckily a fellow creator Aim Adapt has made a great video about the topic. I have linked Liam's video in the description so go check that out if you want to do the pairing. It really Really clear some confusion around the process. But then about my personal experiences with the mouse. Well, I have used it for around three weeks now and I can definitely say I enjoy using it very much. If I want to play the best I can, I seem to choose this mouse. And if I want to grind my aim training scores, I choose this mouse. When I first picked this mouse up, it felt really good in my hand. And when I started to do some Voltaic benchmarks to see how it performs, I was very surprised. I instantly destroyed my previous high scores in every category and I have been climbing since that very steadily. With this mouse during these past three weeks I have almost climbed up a whole Voltaic rank to Jade and this kind of drastic improvement has not happened to me before with any other mouse I've used. There is just something about this mouse shape and the performance that seems to suit me very well but I want to know that it might not suit you as well as me. Everything is subjective and everyone's hand sizes are different. So keep that in mind. But I just wanted to speak about my personal experiences with it a little. But yeah, the mouse is seriously impressive, especially for the price and I've had no issues with it so far. So I can safely recommend it. If you want to get it from MacKeys, I have a code Jero5, you can use to save $5 from the price availability is quite bad at this time however since the demand is quite high but you can put the pre-order in at Mac Keys. I personally bought this from Max Gaming for the same reason and they seem to have both the mouse and the dongle in stock so that is a good option to buy this mouse as well a little bit more pricey however but that is it for the video if you found this video helpful I appreciate it if you press like and subscribe to my channel because that helps my channel a lot thank you for watching and see you on the next video Goodbye.